The Last of Us, God of War, Mass Effect, Disco Elysium. These are some of my favorite games of all time. They all hold a special place in my heart for different reasons. I love the way combat feels in God of War. I love the branching decisions and layered companions of Mass Effect. I love the humor of Disco Elysium. I love the atmosphere of The Last of Us. But the common denominator amongst all these titles is the way they enraptured me with their storytelling. In my playthroughs of each, I found myself ending every play session wondering to myself, what happens next? And I would barely be able to focus the next day at work or school as I watched the clock obsessively, counting down the minutes until I was able to get back in front of the screen and continue my journey. Once I saw each to their conclusion, they all stuck with me in different ways, influencing my perceptions of future titles while also wishing I could wind back the clock to wipe my memory and give them another go. I am incredibly thankful to these titles for the initial experience they gave me. Their characters, their world, their themes and contemplations will stick with me forever. These games tell a story, and there's value in that, a lot of it. However, as I grow older, I find myself seeking out a different kind of experience in the games I play. I enjoy a narrative-focused title every now and again, but the games I keep coming back to, the games that stick with me now, aren't the games that tell a story but the ones that help me create my own. Story generators are a type of game that create its narrative on the fly based on the way the player interacts with the game's systems. Compare this to the other type of game that we'll call a storyteller. Storytellers are games like the aforementioned Last of Us, God of War, Mass Effect, and Disco Elysium. These games lay out pre-planned narratives with intentional beats, twists, and scenes. Now it's important to note that a storyteller doesn't have to be linear. Over the years, as game technology has improved and developer focus has been shifted to value player choice, we're seeing titles give power back to the players as their in-game choices affect the outcome of the narrative. It doesn't change the fact that all the choices you're making and everything you're seeing has been accounted for by the developer. When playing a storyteller, the player plugs directly into the intentions of the developer by virtue of simply interacting with the game. When playing a story generator, on one end there is the player, on the other end, there's the game world and its mechanics, and this gray area in between the two is where the story happens. So far, this has all been pretty nebulous. It's easy to understand what a storyteller is about. You've most likely played plenty of storytellers in your time. But here's a litmus test you can use to start making the distinction between storyteller and story generator. Imagine you're back in high school or middle school, right in the middle of a game capturing the cultural zeitgeist. You know, like, it just seems like everyone and their mother is playing this particular game. For me, these games were Call of Duty Black Ops, Red Dead Redemption 2, and most recently, Elden Ring. Okay, so imagine you and all your friends are playing this game simultaneously, but separately. You've just gotten to lunch, and you're about to sit around the table with your friends and discuss your experiences from the night before. You sit down at the table next to your good friend Harold. You didn't want to sit here. You just happened to be last in line, and this was the only seat left. You see, no one wants to sit directly next to Harold, because Harold smells like fucking chlorine. However, you resign yourself to your position, take your seat beside your public pool-scented friend, and the discourse begins. If said discourse leads with, Oh my god, dude, have you gotten to the part where X? You are playing a storyteller. However, if the discourse leads with, Oh man, you'll never believe what happened last night when X, then you are playing a story generator. Now, this isn't a perfect test because as we'll get into later, this discussion takes place on a continuum, but this gives you a good starting place. Even after that example, it still may not be obvious as to what exactly a story generator is, so let's use an example, a rather notorious one. Dwarf Fortress was created in 2002 by two brothers, Zack and Tarn Adams. 
Dwarf Fortress sees you indirectly controlling a group of dwarves as you attempt to construct a colony or fortress for them to live in. As you attempt to carve out your little slice of land in the wilderness, you'll have to manage your dwarves' mood, livelihood, and safety. There are a litany of things that can go wrong, from starvation to mutiny to accidentally digging into the lair of an archdemon. None of this is scripted or pre-planned. In fact, no two forts will ever be the same even if you wanted them to be, thanks to the world generation. Whenever you boot Dwarf Fortress, it generates an entire world for you with hundreds of years of history, people, places, and artifacts. During this world generation, wars will be waged, monarchs will die and be replaced, you'll see erosion occur in real time, and as a nice little cherry on top, you're given a world wiki so you can go back and read all of this generated history in detail. Once the game officially begins, everyone in the world will have their own personality with unique likes and dislikes. Organs, limbs, and bodily fluids are accounted for on every living creature in the world. The depth is impressive, sure, but what makes Dwarf Fortress wholly unique is how this depth applies to the insane scale of the world. A colony can have hundreds of dwarves, and each will be completely unique. It's the depth, along with the scale of Dwarf Fortress, that makes it such a remarkable achievement in gaming. And calling it a game almost doesn't do it justice. It is a colony management simulator. In fact, it's the ultimate Tolkien-esque fantasy world simulator, no competition. As incredible as the game is, Dwarf Fortress will probably never break into the mainstream, not only because of its depth, not only because of its PC exclusivity, but because for the first 20 years of its history, Dwarf Fortress looked and played like this. It did just recently come out on Steam with mouse support and pixel graphics, but I wouldn't necessarily bet on Dwarf Fortress ever breaking out into the mainstream. And that's okay, because it was never built to. While its ASCII graphics never helped, I think the biggest thing holding back Dwarf Fortress from having mainstream appeal is also its biggest strength, its lack of an in-game goal. The motto of Dwarf Fortress is losing is fun. Inevitably, every fortress will fail in hilarious and sad ways given enough time. There is no winning. You can set personal goals for yourself, but it doesn't change the fact that somewhere down the line, your time will come, whether it's before or after you reach those self-set goals. I won't touch on it too much because ultimately this video is about a lot more than just Dwarf Fortress, but in the description, I'll link below to some of the game forums and videos that give you a better idea of just how insane Dwarf Fortress can be. While Dwarf Fortress itself will never be world famous, it is the progenitor of much more popular games. Chiefly Minecraft, but also Terraria, RimWorld, FTL, and more. The point being, Dwarf Fortress is about you, the player, taking a group of dwarves and trying to make the best of your situation as you encounter a dynamic list of obstacles and events. Nothing in this game is pre-planned or scripted. Each playthrough of Dwarf Fortress is like a fingerprint completely unique and will never be replicated again. It's the most notorious and most extreme story generator out there. But as stated before, the storyteller versus story generator discussion exists on a spectrum. Very few games are solely one type, most possess a mix of the two. If this here represents the teller versus generator continuum, then Dwarf Fortress would be here. So, what would be on the opposite end of the spectrum, embodying a pure storyteller? For this example, we'll go with Life is Strange. Life is Strange sees you assuming the role of Maxine Caulfield, a high school girl who has recently gained the ability to rewind time. Just like Dwarf Fortress, calling Life is Strange a game almost doesn't seem appropriate. It's more like an interactive novel. You can rewind time to experience different branching pathways and decisions, but everything you are seeing, doing, and interacting with is meticulously crafted by the developers. Of course, there's nothing wrong with this. The aforementioned Disco Elysium is criticized by some for its, shall we say, lack of gameplay, but that doesn't stop me from loving it. Life is Strange is still the more appropriate candidate for the title of pure storyteller, because in Disco, your character build, dialogue choices, and equipment can affect the game in a host of ways. In Life is Strange, you are Maxine, and you can only interact with the world in a manner that befits the preconceived notions of what Maxine is, or could be. So, we've described a pure story generator in Dwarf Fortress, and a pure storyteller in Life is Strange. These represent the extreme ends of both philosophies. You'll find that most games fall somewhere in between the spectrum. So, around, say, here, would be something like XCOM 2. There's a campaign, but the community will tell you the real meat of the game comes from the stories the player creates. 
that character they spent hours with who sacrificed themselves for the good of the team. The time the squad seemed to be in an inescapable situation, but they escaped just by the skin of their teeth. In instances like XCOM 2, there is a story, but what's remembered by the player is the story they themselves create. Around here would be something like Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead 2 has incredible characters and writing. The plot and story is the main focus of that game, no doubt. However, when you're not partaking in one of the game's linear story missions, the open world presents itself as a widely compelling sandbox for the player to roam around in. Rob a train or a stagecoach, head to the saloon and pick a bar fight, stick around camp and drink with your fellow gang members, it's all up to you. Now, all of these events are scripted in one way or the other. On a replay, you'll come across the same random events and happenings. The characters and their roles within the story will all be the same, but the player has room for freedom in what they choose to do outside of that linear story. Some games contain a little bit of both in isolation. Total War Warhammer 3 released with the Realms of Chaos campaign, which sees the players attempting to free the bear god Urson from the Clutches of Chaos. This campaign in isolation would fall somewhere around here, on the storyteller versus story generator spectrum. But post-launch, the developers released the much-awaited Immortal Empires game mode, which combines the maps from all three Total War Warhammer games into one mega map with no plot or preconceived notion of what the player should be doing. Want to play as Karl Franz and attempt to unite and strengthen the Empire? Go ahead. Want to play as vampires pillaging and looting enemy ships? Of course you can. Want to play as Skaven and wage Geneva Convention violating chemical warfare? Be my guest. In this way, Total War Warhammer simultaneously indulges in both storytelling and story-generating game design. Now, there is a clear consensus within the community on what they prefer, but Creative Assembly still deserves to be applauded for attempting to capture both styles of game in one package. There's also a strong argument to be made that most competitive multiplayer games exist mostly as story generators. Games like Counter-Strike or League of Legends make for great story generators as each round and match will be completely different from the last. Game engines and scripts are rigidly consistent, even if they can sometimes be a bit unpolished. Humans are complex, messy, and inconsistent. Replacing artificial intelligence with human intelligence ensures constant shifts in dynamics and strategy. A well-developed multiplayer experience can give hundreds of hours of fun. I mean, just look at the insane median playtime for CSGO clocking in at 512 hours. On the other hand, a poorly designed multiplayer game will often see dominant metas and strategies override and nullify the human-to-human -human dynamic that would exist otherwise. When elements of your game can be exploited to the point that you would be stupid not to take advantage, humans, in essence, become AI, acting consistently, evenly, and ruthlessly cold. As fun as a good multiplayer romp can be, this video specifically focuses on great single-player story generators, and in my experience, the best ones usually have a focus on individual personalities. Take RimWorld, for example. Besides Dwarf Fortress, RimWorld is probably the most well-known pure story generator out there. It is just a hair behind Dwarf Fortress on the teller versus generator continuum, because in the end, you do have an overarching goal, but we'll get into that later. For my money, RimWorld surpasses Dwarf Fortress as a game. Now, before the Dwarf Fortress community eats me alive, let me explain. Dwarf Fortress is the superior simulator, no doubt. However, RimWorld has plenty of depth while also not having a sheer cliff of a learning curve. RimWorld allows the player to get directly into the juice of the game, aka story generation, whereas Dwarf Fortress has plenty of hurdles for the player to jump through before they can fully plug into the experience. RimWorld describes itself as a sci-fi colony sim driven by an intelligent AI storyteller. I'm sure you can already see the similarities between it and Dwarf Fortress. You crash land on a strange planet with a group of colonists and try to survive whatever is thrown your way. Unlike Dwarf Fortress, however, you do have an end goal. Get off the planet. However, people have played hundreds of hours of this game without ever reaching that goal. RimWorld never quite reaches the scale of Dwarf Fortress. In Dwarf Fortress, having 100 dwarves is no big deal. In RimWorld, having 100 colonists is an accomplishment. Most veterans of the game won't have built a colony bigger than 50 individuals. Because of this smaller scale, RimWorld is able to focus on these people as individuals more than in Dwarf Fortress. Each colonist in RimWorld is wholly unique, and you can get some pretty quirky people on your side. Each settler has their own background, passions, and dislikes. As the game progresses, you'll have to manage the mental health and stability of your colonists, lest they go insane. 
That isn't to say that Dwarf Fortress doesn't account for individual personalities, because it certainly does. However, Dwarf Fortress does not force the player to reckon with the mental state of its dwarves like RimWorld does with its colonists. Having your best combatant go insane, take off all their clothes, and start wandering the woods right in the middle of an enemy raid could have disastrous consequences for the state of your colony. If it wasn't for this focus on the psychology and individuality of pawns, I'm not sure RimWorld would have the staying power that it does. Base building is fun, sure, but it's the unique set of colonists and the way they interact with each other over the course of a playthrough that makes RimWorld so entertaining and dynamic. Another game that focuses heavily on randomly generated personalities is the Shadow of Mordor series. While not nearly as in-depth as Dwarf Fortress or RimWorld, these games' famous nemesis system generate a host of orc captains all with different traits. Some may be cowardly and flee as soon as they see you. Some may be ruthless, toying with you and humiliating you in victory. Most of them have particular fears, damage resistances, and weaknesses. This random generation and space for unique interactions give both of these games legs way beyond its narrative conclusion. This isn't to say that all great story generators have to focus on randomly generated personalities. Take for instance Stalker Anomaly a mod for the cult classic Ukrainian horror FPS series that ditches any sort of main story and combines the maps of all the previous games to create one giant immersive FPS sandbox. The gameplay loop of Anomaly is simple. You take jobs, simple jobs like rescue the prisoner, deliver the package, collect these parts, etc. It's not obsidian level quest design and in any other game this stuff would all fall flat. However, Anomaly gains the privilege of being able to use these generic quests because the world and AI is so dynamic, you're looking for any chance you can get to trek back out there. Seriously, a simple escort mission from point A to point B, even over land you've traversed frequently, can be drastically different based on which factions happen to be present at the time, which mutants are in the local area, and if there's an omission on the horizon. Stalker doesn't really focus on the psychology of the people in-game at all, Sure, you'll hear people talk about how depressing and glum being inside the zone is, but it's not mechanized in any way. So, while randomly generated personalities seem to be a common theme amongst a lot of great story generators, it's not a hard and fast rule. Now, a disclaimer before we move on, because if I don't say this, the stalker community would skin me alive. While Anomaly is great, don't think this makes the original trilogy any less worthy of your time. They're just as dynamic, and they have actual storylines to boot. They're dirt cheap, and I highly recommend you pick them up. Okay, thanks, bye. I think story generators are compelling for so many because they lean into what make video games truly unique. As great as some video game stories are, they aren't unique to the art form. Take, for instance, The Last of Us. One of my favorite games, period. My love for the game has nothing to do with the gameplay and everything to do with the story and characters. When the game released, a frequent comment in the discourse was, yes, the story is great, so great I wish I could skip the lackluster static gameplay to get to the good story bits. This is a completely valid complaint. The legacy of The Last of Us exists outside of its merits as a video game. This was all but confirmed when the TV adaptation gained just as much acclaim and praise as the game did. Now, the show isn't a one-to-one -one recreation of the game, it couldn't be, but it got close enough that it all but confirmed the sentiment of great game, but it didn't have to be a game. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that sentiment, but doesn't it pose an interesting question for us to ponder? A lot to chew on while we prepare for the Season 2 capital D Discourse. We've been telling stories for centuries, at first, only orally. Then we wrote them down. Now we can record them and broadcast them. We have so many options for our stories, from books, to movies, to podcasts, to TV, to video games. However, story generation is something you can only find in video games. Well, besides one exception. The only other medium I can think that frequently delivers on story generation is tabletop role-playing games. You know, Dungeons and Dragons. Take the D&D module Tomb of Horrors. You could run this module ten times, changing nothing between each playthrough, and each time would be completely different. Each group coming away with different anecdotes, inside jokes, and memories from the experience. This makes perfect sense. If we return to this graphic from earlier, we can see that the story happens in the space between the game's systems and the player's intent. If we look at this through the lens of tabletop gaming, we'll see a similar situation. On one end is what the Game Master has prepped and prepared for, what they think is going to happen. 
On the other end is the player's ambitions and actions. The game only happens between these two points, where the Game Master's preparations meets the player's intentions. This is a large part of the appeal of tabletop. If your D&D game looks more like a storyteller, where the players are forced to meet the Game Master's preparations on their terms, it never ends well. It's negatively referred to as railroading. Where video game story generation is different from tabletop story generation is its solitary nature. Anytime you put two humans in a situation with differing goals, the result will always be dynamic. Of course it makes sense that tabletop would be that way. This also explains why competitive multiplayer titles are so dynamic. Story generators are most successful when they're able to simulate the feeling of being head-to-head -head with another human. This is why RimWorld has you pick your AI storyteller at the beginning of each playthrough. In reality, whatever you pick is just a jumble of code and numbers designed to perform based on an algorithm assigned to it. However, by giving these AI storytellers a face, a name, and a preconceived personality, you make the player feel like they're entering the experience with another human, and there's a lot of value in that. I'm not here to convince you that one type of game is better than the other. Both storytellers and generators have their own appeal, and having a healthy mix of both in your library is probably best. It's great to be able to sit back, relax, and have a story told to you. It's human nature. We've been telling stories to each other for eons, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I just can't help but shake the feeling that story generators don't get the credit they deserve. Dwarf Fortress lives on in relative obscurity even after grandfathering some of the most popular video games of this generation. And I'm not here to espouse the idea that this injustice is being committed by the unenlightened, filthy casual. I praised RimWorld for its accessibility when compared to Dwarf Fortress, but that's sort of like giving Fox News a pat on the back for not being as bad as InfoWars. Most of these games have cliffside learning curves, inaccessible UI, and graphics that, in essence, require you to learn another language. The folks who get over these barriers love what's on the other side, but these games make you go through so much before you're ever able to effectively generate stories. I think the closest a story generator has ever come to cracking the mainstream are the previously mentioned Shadow of Mordor games. The Nemesis system in these games set the world ablaze, and it's still talked about today while the game's plot, along with other elements, have largely been forgotten. I mean, they've even put this system in Skyrim. I'm not sure what it would take to have a game like Dwarf Fortress crack the mainstream, and I'm not sure I would even want it to. I have a lot of cynical ideas about the current state of AAA gaming, and the idea of Ubisoft helming something with an elevator pitch of AAA RimWorld doesn't really sound great to me. I don't claim to be some sort of all-seeing sage, but I think story generation is the future of gaming. Some will say VR, but I really think the jury's still out on that one, especially after the abysmal performance of the PSVR 2. We've got a few things on the horizon, like Ghost Story Games as Judas. This is headed up by Ken Levine, the mind behind the original Bioshock, and he claims this game takes a lot of inspiration from the Nemesis system. The reveal trailer for this one dropped last December, and while I'm hopeful they'll deliver, it has reportedly fallen into development hell. I guess all we can do is wait. I'm not sure that pure story generation will ever fall into mainstream gaming. It's just so much easier to market a traditional narrative game. And there's nothing wrong with that. Please, Rockstar, for the love of God, make GTA 6 just as compelling as Red Dead Redemption 2. Zaum, whatever the hell's going on with you, please make something that at least lands in the ballpark of Disco Elysium's pedigree. I am a fan of narrative games, and I always will be. On the other hand, I think story generation represents what could be. So in the meantime, I'll be in my gamer hole, building a rocket, trying to get off this godforsaken planet. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time, friends.